for almost four decades, my guest has been synonymous. Her name, I'm talking about her face, her distinctive voice, has been known by audiences everywhere. Thanks to her many award-winning works in television, radio, film, and digital media, mostly known by one name. I'm not going to tell you until we introduce her, and she's coming up right now. We're getting one-on-one. America's sweetheart, Rolanda! Bitch, you're America's other sweetheart. How are you, darling? I am fantastic. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. Sitting up here in my, my home studio. <laughs> I know, you right? Know, talking to you. It's you got a your joy. Spelman shirt on. With my Spelman College shirt on. <laughs> yeah, I sported, I sported Morehouse last week on Facebook. So I said, I got to give Spelman some love. Give <laughs> Spelman some love. How have you been? I've been great. Really have been great. I um, had a little uh, health scare during the holidays, but then I turned it around. It wasn't COVID, but I got a stomach flu and then turned it around. And then I said, um, golly, I lost a little weight. So I started working out. And so if you see me sweating now, that's because I'm coming. It's not menopause. <laughs> it's because I was working out racing to get here with you and then throw on the shirt and then poof. But um, yeah, just everything's good. You know, this has been a time of reinvention and, um, you know, doing every everything is different. Everything is different. And being able to embrace the difference and just roll with the punches and try to learn as much as we can and find mm. the gifts within ourselves. It's been a remarkable time, too. So. Yeah, that's life, though. The ups, the downs, the surprises, the twists, the turns. And that's correct. We <laughs> yeah. so, so we're talking about four decades of you, television, radio, synonymous with voiceover work. And I mean, how have you survived this long? <laughs> Just like roaches and crabgrass. I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I just think they can't catch me. <laughs> you know, just just when they um now, you know, I just keep finding joy in things to do. Mm. And I find so much joy in those new things that I find to do that I am successful in them. And so I have enjoyed lots of different careers that have never felt as if I'm working mm. my voice acting career. And I've got to say, we just heard that uh, Lego City Adventure, where I play Mary Sinclair, we just got our fourth season. So we're really excited about that. Good. And yeah. Who knew that? Who ever dreamed when I was doing my talk show that one day you'll be a Lego <laughs> <laughs> and you'll work with a monkey called Curious George for 20 years. Wow. You know, who would ever think? So I think, um, you know, that what I've been doing is fun and natural reinventions of myself because there were things I always wanted to do. And sometimes my back was against the wall where I didn't have much of a choice but to look and find a gift I could turn into some some money <laughs> right right you know so the side hustle is real man all right so so you you just spoke about your talk show and many of us grew up watching you on that show for four years right that show went on four seasons yeah four seasons so after that that show what did you do next well i came to hollywood I had always, all of my life, what nobody knew then, is that, that I had always wanted to be an actor. In fact, I majored in theater arts at Spelman College and had every intention of going to Broadway. That was my dream. So I, I, I was thinking, how can I get to New York so my parents will leave me alone? Mm -hmm. And I said I would have to be in school. So I applied to this school called Columbia's Graduate School of Journalism. <laughs> <laughs> I knew I didn't know what it was. I knew I could write. Okay. Uh -huh. <laughs> and I got in and I just remember telling my daddy, I'm not really here to be a journalist. I'm here to be an actor. And I remember he took the long draw out of his cigarette. <laughs> Bitch, one of them, one of them times you look at your daughter <laughs> and his jaws went in. He was, he sucked on that thing so hard. <laughs> and he said, he said, you know something? 
He said, good luck, little girl. I went to one cattle call and I said, that was it. That was yeah. it. I'll come back when you know my name. And so I fell in love with journalism and took that route and did, you know, worked with ABC and NBC in New York and Inside Edition and then did my own talk show. And then when all of that was behind me, I said, here is a chance to go for what I've always wanted to do. I said, I could sit on a porch at 100 years old going, I could have, would have, should have. I could have been a contender if I'd only gotten out of this rocking chair and tried. You know, if I only got out of this couch or this bed and tried, I could have what I could have done. I'm not going to tell that story. Mm -hmm. And so I said, you know, what is the biggest fear doing it? Or what if I don't? That's the biggest fear I would have is what if I didn't go after something I dreamed of since I was knee high to a grasshopper. So I came out and that was at a time where they were like, don't be over your 30s and don't be black and don't be a woman if you want to work in Hollywood. I was right. 38. I was black. and I was coming from a talk show. <laughs> it was like, and I, but I was like, I'm not going to listen to that. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it my way. And yeah. my first job was playing Vivica Shaw on Sister, Sister <laughs> and went on to play on everybody's shows from Cedric the Entertainer and Jamie Foxx and Flex Alexander on One on One. and just had a one, you know, just wonderful co career in, in acting. And then mm -hmm. when the actors went on, the writers went on strike, I discovered voice acting, you know, when you physically didn't show up. I took a course, fell in love with the voice acting. And that was 25 of my 40 years in the business. And I have loved that, that as well. And I've written a book and done a lot of stand up comedy. And, um, you know, just, just now trying to be a, trying to be a social media babe or something. I need a, oh. I need a big hit on TikTok, you know? <laughs> <laughs> now, you said stand-up comedy. Yeah. Who knew? Who knew, you know? Well, you know something. D.L. Hoogley couldn't believe it. And I headlined at Caroline's in New York. Wow. And old D.L. was like, no, you didn't. I said, yes, I did. He says, how did this happen? He goes, he goes I have to tell you. He goes, when I first heard Rolanda Watts is doing comedy, he said, it was kind of like when I first heard about cheddar, about popcorn and cheddar, cheddar and caramel popcorn together. He goes, I was like, what? <laughs> and then it was like, okay, that's kind of good. That makes sense. <laughs> so yeah, um, it's something I've always wanted to do. That was another thing. Um, mm. If I don't stand for anything, I stand for go for your dreams. And, and, you know, when the time is right, go for what you've always wanted to do. And you never know what could happen. That's true. And, you know, you just never know. And um, I got a dare from Kim Coles to get up on stage and do some comedy. She said, I, and I freaked. And she said, no, you've all you said you've always wanted to do it. Don't choke now. Uh huh. And she said, all I need is five minutes. And 17 minutes later, I was hooked. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I've been performed at the Comedy Club, Flappers, the Ice House in New York. Um, was just about to do a show at the, at the Gotham in New York. And uh, we got COVID. And it was about <laughs> to go on tour. Was doing cannabis comedy. Ca cam cannabis comedy. Oh. Uh-oh. Yeah. yeah. Not, not cannabis. Cannabis. Okay. Because I think cannabis is good for menopausal women. Is that right? I think so. Let me find out. You be in the coma. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Get your, okay. <laughs> That's CBD. CBD. <laughs> uh, so, so, yeah. so, so with, with your TV show, did you feel like, I got a two-part question here. Did okay. you feel like you had failed? at that show because it didn't go as long as it could have gone or was it one of those things where it had run its course and you was ready to move on to do something else? No, it was a time where if you look back in the nineties, what was going on with talk shows mm -hmm. was, was pretty gruesome. Mm -hmm. um, I think Netflix just recently did a whole show about what was going on in the, in the sordid nineties. I think they <laughs> referred to it. But it was back when people were throwing chairs and disrespecting folks and pop quiz. And actually, there were murders going on. I think you may re recall. The right. Joke. Right. Right. And I had come from a very rich history as a, an investigative news reporter in New York City, as an anchor woman in WABC, WNBC, New Jersey Network, uh, and, and also 
uh, you know, coming from Columbia University and Spelman and just the reputation that I had. I couldn't do the pop, guess here's your, here's your baby mama quizzes. And it became a very sordid time in talk. Mm-hmm. And um, I think in terms of my, just in terms of, sec- of securing or maintaining the integrity that we had for the show, we had a choice that we could either compete in the ratings by doing what the others were doing. Um, and I can remember the last show I did, Finch, uh, not the last show that I did, but the last show of that genre that we did. Uh, and we did um, a show where uh, the, the guy was going to reveal to his girlfriend that he'd been cheating on. Uh, and so he does the big reveal and embarrasses this poor girl who turns to him and says, well, I got something for you. I've been cheating on you, too. And he, the audience goes crazy. He stands up and throws this big hawk at this girl, spits on her. Whoa. And that's when I decided this is not I can't stay and compete like this to compete with this type of thing. You would have to go even worse than that. Mm-hmm. And so I decided it's as Roger King, my partner who produced my show with me, um, who didn't want to see me do that type of, of, of television either, said, we won't say the show was canceled. We just say it wasn't continued. Do I feel we failed? No, I feel mm-hmm. uh, it was sad that, you know, people would say we watch your show, but they were going in watching far more sordid TV than what we were doing. We were getting kids out of gangs. We were helping families get together. We were reuniting families, helping gay children come out. We were helping people from suicide. We were dealing with race issues. And apparently that was a little too, I remember TV guy said one time, Finch, Rolanda's too nice for talk TV. Wow. That, you know, that's a, today is a very different story and a very different tone in talk than it was in the 90s. But in the 90s, you might remember Geraldo got his nose broken with a chair. Yeah. Uh, there was a surprise that went awry on Jenny Jones. It ended up in a murder. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm sorry, I don't want the name Rolanda associated with that type of uh, that type of television. Um, so yeah. it, plus, you know, there were so many other things to do. So. I had four good years and that's, that's a long time in television right. and we did really good work. So do I feel like it was a failure? No, I felt that it was time to leave with, uh, while you still had your dignity intact. W- would you come back today with a talk show, a television sure. talk show? Sure. If it was the right one. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. And, and, and I agree with you. You know, I think even with what I do now in podcasts and you have a podcast as well. So, you know, Rolanda like, on demand. <laughs> tell them Rolanda on demand. Yeah, Rolanda on demand. Remember, it's R-O-L-O-N-D-A. Rolanda, not Rolanda. Rolanda, <laughs> <laughs> Rolanda on demand. Just go over there. I, I just put another one up today. We're talking about Wendy Williams, Kim and Kanye. And to 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 what is it? To, is it Tamika Brown? I don't want to call her the Gorilla Glue Girl, but we're doing an update. Oh my goodness! <laughs> <laughs> well, you my might as well call her that. Everybody else is calling her that. I know, but she's like, I have a name. I'm like, I know, but everybody knows the Gorilla Glue Girl. So I'm trying to be polite. <laughs> Nobody's yeah. gonna call you by your name anymore. Gorilla Glue <laughs> Girl is what they're gonna call you. Um, but yeah, I I, I, I kind of get that because I feel the same way. Like I love what we stand for on this show. You know, it's not we're not a show that we're just going to interview celebrities or people in importance. We feel like, hey, if you have secrets or recipes to help the audience scale, climb or clear their fence, we want to talk to you because everybody needs a little encouragement. Everybody needs a little motivation, a little inspiration. So I'm not going to ever do a show like everybody else is doing just to stay on on the air because I mean podcasts are free. <laughs> well, you know something that's true, and that was the beautiful thing. I've been podcasting through since I remember Whitney Houston died February twelfth, two thousand twelve. That's when I started my podcast because that was a place where we could all come together and mourn, and you know, everybody on Facebook was like, "Let's join the conversation." It's like, what conversation? We're texting. Let's go and talk someplace. So I went started on Blog Talk Radio and you know, have, have been around ever since. And and I think that that has helped me get out my Q&A side, you know, mm-hmm. still doing that, that, uh, that side of production. But it has been a wonderful opportunity, this whole digital movement, to not have to go and beg some guy in the White Tower to please give you a show or to please, right. you know, you can do a show right now, like, like 50 million people are doing. What you're right. doing is no different than what they're doing on network TV right now. True. You know, so if you wanted a show, just do the show. 
it, and that's think that that's uh, that's something that I've learned a lot of what from a lot of my the younger generation is. Mm -hmm. You know, don't turn to the networks. You do it work from where you are. TikTok it, Instagram it. Right. You know, there's 50 million ways to get your messages out. And it's a learning curve, but it's it's a new day. Yeah, yeah, but you have an opportunity to be your own boss. Why do you think a vast majority of people, because you've reinvented yourself 40,000 times over. <laughs> at least 20. <laughs> at least 20, right? Why do you think so many people stay stuck in a certain area and not able to reinvent themselves so that they can proceed past a certain point? Why do they not reinvent yeah. themselves? Why, why don't they reinvent themselves? Fear. I think it's mainly fear. I mean, fear just paralyzes the heck out of people. And there's also the concern of what are other people going to say? You know, what will people think of me? Mm. And it's also the fear of what if I fail? What if this doesn't work out? I mean, it's overall fear, but there are different levels of that. Um, my question is, you know, you know, people say, well, what if, what if, what if I do, I mean, what if I don't make the money? What if, what if they talk about it? What if, what, what if I, what if I do it? What if I do it? And my question is, what if you don't? Right. Can you live with not doing this? You know, even if it's something, I find this with my voice acting masterclass. I have mm. people who have dreamed of being voice actors all of their lives. Wow. And then congratulations under COVID, you just got fired. You just got laid off. <laughs> right. <laughs> the rug just got pulled out from under you. And that has been a blessing, but they're still like timid. Should you think I should? I'm like, if not now, when? This right. is your opportunity to get your side hustle, learn something new and take something that distracts you from, from the day to day that's going on. Learn a new skill. Um and and go back and look half the things that we are good at, Finch, mm -hmm. and stuff that we did as kids. True. You know, it's all that that stuff. I used to talk so much. My daddy used to give me a tape recorder and say, could you go in the room and <laughs> the tape recorder and just make up a bunch of voices and, and, you know, I'll listen to it later. And I look at what I do today. Mm. Go in a little room, making up little voices. <laughs> <laughs> On a little tape recorder with a microphone. You same know, thing. Same thing. So sometimes, you know, when you're in reinvention mode, it's time for you to change up because you're not happy. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you sometimes you have to look at all that would happen if you don't do this. If you don't do this, you'll continue to be unhappy. You continue to to wonder how good you could be. Mm. You continue to be a, a, a you know, you're not even a quitter. You don't even try. <laughs> right. You don't even try. That's, that's what do you correct. call that? <laughs> you, you know, I, I think people are stuck in a time period because of because of fear, but also because of insecurities that they've had since childhood. You know, they don't they don't believe enough. I was just sharing this with a friend of mine this evening. Uh, they don't believe enough in themselves. They don't value themselves. They value everybody else around them but themselves and what they're able to do. And you're right. What if you don't do this? What's going to happen to the people that you could have or should have impacted if you don't do it? So I think that's more so the question I think we should ask ourselves while we're sitting on the fence. Some of us are camping out on the fence right now. And look, you know? some of us waffling so much fence. I'm going I'm, I'm to walk opposite fence. <laughs> 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 I said, some of us are waffling so much. I'm a poor syrup on us. Yeah, not, you know? not being able to make and just paralyzed in indecision. You know, there, there, there are no mistakes. They're just stronger choices to make the next time. And so what, so what if you don't like it? Do choose something else. Mm -hmm. Check that off the list. True. I tell people in my class, I say, now look, don't go out spending thousands of dollars on no Neumann, no Neumann, all those expensive. Uh, microphones right they get through this class and say thank god i took this class because i never want to do this again exactly but, but you've got to immerse yourself in the trying something new and that takes a lot of courage i mean we've all been scared before mm -hmm. and, and i think the thing is i look at fear as as a kissing cousin mm. it ain't going nowhere so nowhere. you might as well make friends with it invite it to the table and have tea with it <laughs> hey, there you there here you come again because it's a natural thing. It's built in us as human beings and mm -hmm. it serves a purpose. 
I mean, if without fear, you wouldn't know to run the hell out that room. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Without fear, you wouldn't know how to whoop somebody's butt if you had to in the middle of a dark alley. And without fear, you wouldn't be paralyzed and get shot either. So fear serves mm. different, it serves a reason to, to help you survive, mm. but you can't be paralyzed by it. You've got to fight and, and run the course um, and face it. Face fear and do it anyway, as they say. Um, mm-hmm. but it's a, but it's, and, when, and when people say that false evidence appearing real, that is such bull because <laughs> it's very real. I don't know if the last time you were scared, that's some real stuff. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, not, real. it's not false evidence appearing to be it's real. Not, it's, it's actually real. Real evidence showing <laughs> up again, you know? Uh, someone has a question here. How much is the class and how do I sign up? For the voice acting master class, you can go to Rolanda.com, R-O-L-O-N-D-A.com, and I give you a whole rundown of what this six-week intense course is all about, and we can set up a call, and I can answer all of your other questions, but it's a good one. My yeah. students, in fact, we have a class tomorrow. I get so proud of them. They're actually getting auditions after this class, which surprised me. I didn't promise you to get on that. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> How are you surprised that they get work? <laughs> I know, I really, but I was like, okay, you're going to, I thought they would go and then they go get their demo reel. Uh-uh, they're getting out. They're, go, they're going for it. And oh. I'm so proud of them. Their demo reels are amazing. And they're, they're the Fisher Biden. You know, I thought they'd have to wait months. Right. You know, these people are getting work. Audio books, animations. I'm so proud. I don't know what to do. I really, really am. And especially for, um, you know, a lot of, of, of African-American uh, mm-hmm. actors, because it, it just hasn't been open like this before. Right. And uh, as you can hear, the voice, our, our voice is out there now. That's you true. hear it in commercials and animations and, you know, it's a new day and the sound is different of the day. Mm-hmm. And that comes in voices that mainly are there to give us comfort. So, it, you know, there's a lot, lot to go in that class. And I'm glad you're interested I hope I'll talk with you. <laughs> Absolutely. So let me ask you this. You know, with all you've accomplished, and you know, oftentimes people look at, oh, she's had a talk show. She does voiceover. She does all these things. With all of your successes, how do you deal with disappointment and letdowns? You know, I deal with it very fleetingly. You know, it's like I came so close on two pro- two major projects. Mm-hmm. Uh, in the past couple of weeks. And I just knew I had those projects. You know, the old, you're on a veil. Right. Right, which basically means you, you're going to stand there until we find somebody else. <laughs> 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 no, that's not what that means, children. That's not what that means. <laughs> well, it can mean a, a lot of things. But to make a long story short, I didn't get them. Mm. And it was like, <laughs> poo, boo-hoo. <laughs> oh, you know, it's like, and then you get up and go to the next audition. I just turned in some other auditions. I worked so hard on them. And, you know, we're all doing this stuff at home in our own sets, you know, with all this stuff set up. Mm-hmm. We're doing them our, so I'm doing the best I can. That's all I can say. I'm the cameraman. I'm the tech person. I'm the editor. I set <laughs> up the blue walk papers. <laughs> I'm getting the lights on the stuff. I am working this thing. I'm doing the best I can. <laughs> And, and that, on that alone, I tell myself, I am so proud of you. You have to take time to, to find the little joys and, and, and successes that you do throughout the day. Hmm. You know, just the fact that you got the audition turned in with all the things you have to do today to, to compete. Um, be proud of yourself for that. You hmm. know, a lot of people, don't not, they're not going to do all that because this is, Remember before COVID, I don't know about you, but I was noticing the world was becoming a little really mediocre. Right. True that. You know, just people just don't. And back in my day, now look, I sound like I'm 100. I knew one day I would say this shit. You know, <laughs> back in my day, <laughs> we took pride in being excellent at what we did. We spoke well when we were on TV, we dressed well. You know, we did all, right. you know, this is a very loose world today. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's just like, 
I don't know if that's mediocre or that's a new way of doing things, but I will tell you this, the road of 24 hour working your butt off is did not a lot of traffic on that road. True. You know, sometimes you'll just outwork the other person. You'll, you, you know, you'll just beat them on. You don't go anywhere. You work, you work it. No, no. Um, and, and I am this way now, you know, before COVID life looked different. COVID has shifted how we see things. Um, <laughs> completely shifted how we see things. And there's been a lot of times doing not just this period, just in life period where we're not motivated or we don't we don't we don't feel sure of ourselves. And that's where I call that's defense for me. It's uh, uh, the area of uncertainty. What do you tell yourself to get motivated and stay motivated for you can t- continue to to continue to reinvent yourself and do so many things. I think uh, faith without works is dead. You know, I keep my faith strong. Um, I remember I was complaining to, to Della Reese one time and I was like, this acting thing is something else. And da, da, da. She said, she said, I said, when is the big one going to come? When is the, <laughs> she, she, said, <laughs> she said, baby, you don't have to know when it's coming. You just have to believe that it is coming. Mm. And so I have to always keep that thing of, oh, it's, it's coming. It's already here. You know, as we always say, claim it. You know, it's always staying positive, trying to stay. And that's a choice. You know, people say you smile a lot. You're positive. That's a choice. That's a choice to make. Um, so staying positive, you know, keeping your faith strong, but also doing the work. Um, like I say, taking a class or teaching a class. You know, it, it's a certain time in life. You have so much more to offer just because of your experience. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you can find something in yourself or you can you could lend your experience to somebody else and help them find an easier road on the way, then do that. Give back in those ways. I think that when you're helping somebody, you don't feel despair. I think that when you're doing something to, to elevate brother man that it takes away from your worry for yourself because mm-hmm. your problems are very small compared to what you can do by just reaching out and sharing a story or a hand with somebody. No, that's true. All right. So you are, I, I would consider the queen <laughs> of reinvention. So let's give people three secrets or three recipes to reinvent yourself. What would be number one for you? Uh, educate yourself on new things. And I think, you know, you, well, I know at YouTube University, my goodness, I'm about to get my degree. You, you know, between Googling it and YouTube University, you can learn anything. Man, you and can. Also, you know, there are new apps today. Clubhouse app is, a, you know, as we met there, mm-hmm. amazing app where you can actually reach out and meet people who are doing major things that I don't think you would have been able to meet otherwise. There's another app, a uh, stereo app, another conversation app. So get in the conversation, uh, ju- you, you know, g- get in the, those classrooms. Master classes are everywhere. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so so learning something, I think, is always good, even if it's learning how social media works. How can mm-hmm. I boost my brand through Instagram? How do I even start a brand? How do mm-hmm. I know what my brand is? How do I start an online business? You know, and it's being able to, um, that's number one, educating yourself. Educate yourself, okay. Educate yourself. I think also if you don't go within, you go without. There's so many gifts that you have inside of you that you haven't even tapped on yet. And maybe going through tough times helps us really have to, you know, mm-hmm. hunker down and, and really look at what we have to offer. Um, you know, even if it's you're trying to get into podcasting, changing your energy to do something new um, that and, and mostly things that make you happy. Right. Do something that makes you happy. And a lot of that comes from stuff we did back as children. I don't know if you're an artist that's always wanted to be doing art. My girlfriend just bought a piano, a keyboard. And it's learning how to play the piano. I'm like, what are you kidding me? She's a yoga teacher. I'm like, what the hell are you doing? But this is something that is going to change her whole energy Mm -hmm. and help her reinvent the cells, the happy cells that are going to attract a whole lot of other good stuff to her. So when you're happy, the money will come. When you're happy, the opportunities come. So help change your energy by applying yourself to what makes you happy. 
you know, happiness only can work with you applying yourself, your 50%. You know, that my mama would say, God believes in matching grants. <laughs> matching grants. You better put your 50% in and he'll beat you halfway. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And, and what's the final, what would be the final secret or recipe? Oh, let's see for reinvention. Um, you know, I would just say, take on a daring spirit. You know, life is to be gulped, not sipped. Woo. You're going to be an, a, a, a witness or a participant in life. And sometimes that means get off the fence. <laughs> You know, stop, don't stop being all willy nilly. <laughs> you know, that doesn't serve anything. I guess what I'm saying is don't be the world's best kept secret. Mm. And the only way you can do that is to start to apply yourself to life. Show up. Life is about showing up, mm. even if it's for yourself. And take time to be proud of when you show up for yourself. I did my workout today. Mm. I, I I made up my bed before I left. I cleaned up my kitchen before I went to sleep. The little things, you know, mm. just little stuff. And I made those five calls that are going to help my career this week. Check, check off the list. Just little things. Every step closer and closer mm. to your goal. I was on my uh, podcast. I just talked to Sean Robinson, who is talking about 90 Day Fiance and uh, bearing all, all this nasty stuff on TV. And she was, and she was talking about, um, you know, this lifetime movie that she got uh, that she's producing, and she said it all came from a vision board that she had put together. Wow! So the power of vision boarding, things like that. Um, but you know, I do Rolanda's reinvention retreat, and we talk a lot about stuff like visualizing, mm -hmm. and you know, go to Rolanda.com and save your seat for my free retreat. But we talk about things like that, just to empower each other and inspire each other, because mm -hmm. it is a scary thing to try something new. Mm -hmm. And um, but if you don't risk, you don't live, Finch. You know, you can't you can't live life on the sidelines. You cannot. Did you say free? I said free. <laughs> Did I say free? Yes. I do. They're just for fun. I mean, people go, you can sign up. Just all you do is totally free. Just give me your email so I can send you the Zoom room information. And we meet, you know, here and there and just talk about, you know, like facing fear and doubt and anxiety. How do you deal mm -hmm. with that? And we talk about, um, but next we're going to be talking about vision boarding and touch stoning because I, the, Sean was just talking about that on Rolando on demand on my podcast, but it's also so much of my life, you know, um, and, and dealing with naysayers and just helping people get over the hump. You know, it's, it's like, it's Tuesday night. Okay. And a lot of people have had the second day of a week that they don't like mm -hmm. doing what they do and they're mm -hmm. ready for a change and they're just unhappy. It could be with your body. It could be with the way you eat. We had Jackie Reed on my show talking about going from journalism to veganism. She's a vegan. She's got me eating impossible burgers for God's <laughs> sakes. <laughs> Welcome to the club. <laughs> I You're said welcome. you can't have an impossible pork chop. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> You know what they say. I'll give up the, the red meat, but I ain't giving up the pink meat. <laughs> Listen, I've been trying to get my sister to go vegan for quite some time. I went vegan three years ago. So, Are you vegan? Yeah. Get out of Dodge. Yeah, I, I, I've been knowing about Impossible Burgers and Beyond Burgers and Beyond Meat. <laughs> they are so good. I can't See? believe I'm not eating. I guess it's impossible for me to believe. <laughs> totally get it. But you know, so, but I'm really enjoying it. And I find that instead of making meat the main course, I meat will be the side dish to all the vegetables. I'm eating way more vegetables than ever before. You know? Yeah, you feel better too, right? Yeah. And you know something, if black folks better get their immunity up these days. You know, so yeah, yeah, it's a it's a good time to really look at our health. No question. Yeah. 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 Well, I have enjoyed you. If people want to connect with you, how can they do so online? Well, I'm on all forms of social media at Rolanda Watts, and that's R-O-L-O-N-D-A at Rolanda Watts. Subscribe and download. Just download. Those are my ratings. Download <laughs> all of my podcasts over at Rolanda On Demand. You can go to RolandaOnDemand.com or wherever you love podcasts. 
and um, Rolanda.com. You can sign up for my free reinvention retreat. You can also sign up for my not so free voice. (laughs) (laughs) Not so free. (laughs) Not so free voice acting masterclass. And you can find out all the crazy stuff that I'm into and all the different ways I've reinvented myself and all that kind of stuff. But yeah, that's it. That's it. The podcast, the Masterclass, the reinvention retreat, and the rest of everything else on social media. Mm-hmm.